My name is uh, Julian Ringhoff. Uh, I'm a policy fellow at the European Council on Foreign Relations, where I work on uh, how new technological developments uh, relate with international affairs and geopolitics. I would say that the TTC is, is maybe uh, the poster child of EU digital diplomacy. So um, in 2022, um, the EU actually agreed on digital diplomacy uh, council conclusions is what it's called. So basically a, a, a common strategy of how digital diplomacy is to, to be uh, implemented by the EU. And the TTC is, is really a, a prime example of this where the EU has identified certain areas, including semiconductor production and research or the governance of digital platforms, where, because uh, we are living in a connected world, it, the EU can only achieve its goals if it works together with partners. And semiconductors, that's because the supply chains are so complicated and so long with uh, uh, um, hundreds of production steps uh, uh, are happening across the world, uh, that's impossible for one country to basically uh, bring all of these product uh, production steps uh, 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 with it within the country. And so you need to work together with partners to increase the resilience of these supply chains. And that's what's happening in the, in the TTC. Similarly, um, digital platforms, uh, social media platforms is, is a good example. Um, of course, what you see uh, on these platforms, uh, the good and bad, um, this happens across borders. Uh, and if the EU um, basically as one of the um, regions or maybe the region in the world that has been very uh, forward looking in, in how um, uh, these platforms can be governed uh, so that they don't undermine uh, um, democratic processes uh, as much as, as we have witnessed in recent years. Um, the EU is really strong in regulating these platforms uh, and is moving ahead. And the US on the other side is, of course, the home to these platforms. So cooperating there makes a lot of sense also because this will probably yield a lot of impact on, uh, on, on how these platforms do their business uh, in third countries. Uh, and so hopefully this cooperation between the EU and the US uh, in the TTC as part of the EU's digital diplomacy serves the EU's interests, it serves the US interests, and maybe even has a few uh, positive uh, uh, benefits for, for third countries around the world. Um, I think for, for the next TTC, it will be really interesting to see. Um, there was a little bit of disappointment, uh, disappointment in the uh, 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 among uh, uh, the media and, and, uh, uh, and also experts, as I said, with the last uh, TTC summit. Um, but I think for the next one, um, the areas where I do hope that there's, uh, let's say, um, increased engagement uh, certainly includes uh, critical minerals and raw materials. Um, as a, as a response, basically, to the um, Inflation Reduction Act, um, both uh, the German and the French Minister for Economic Affairs recently traveled to the US uh, and they proposed uh, to create, uh, basically, a critical minerals and raw materials club. Um, um, to, and this, this can be understood as a um, sectorial trade agreement where rather than having one big trade agreement like TTIP uh, uh, was an effort to, 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 to be, be such thing, um, you have these sectorial agreements where in this case in raw materials uh, and critical minerals you basically create a free trade zone so that um, both sides can jointly strengthen uh, the, the resilience of supply chains of the these, uh, of these um, minerals that are extremely important for both clean technology as well as for a lot of digital technologies. Um, and so I really hope that um, and there's some progress on that. And uh, also I do hope, and this would be really important even though I, it's, under, it's not so easy for the US sometimes to accept this, um, that there's more cooperation on 6G development. Um, where the US and the EU sometimes have a bit of different priorities. Um, 
um, because the US uh, supports something called Open RAN, um, whereas the EU believes this is not really uh, market ready yet. And I, I really hope um, as basically a big united response to the, to the very strong Chinese uh, uh, um, developments in 6G telecommunications that uh, both sides can come together to develop uh, basically a, a roadmap on how, how research can be uh, done together uh, at an extensive level uh, in, the, in the coming years. The Digital Decade program then um, is of course European, the, the EU strategy, the grand strategy uh, you may call it, uh, for how the EU can increase its domestic capabilities in the digital world until 2030 with uh, targets set across four different pillars. Uh, so these are the four pillars are digital skills, digital infrastructure, um, the digital transformation of businesses, and uh, digitalization of the, of the public sector. And uh, of course, all of our pillars are crucial for, for Europe to be able to develop technology, uh, new technologies, to then not have to rely on third countries for these technologies and to not technologically sovereign. Uh, and there are really ambitious goals in, in, in the digital decade. Uh, it includes, for example, um, that the EU wants to have a gigabit network coverage of 100% uh, in the EU, um, that the EU wants to have, uh, now the EU has 10% of global semiconductor production, it wants to increase it to 20%, um, it wants to um, uh, have all businesses in the EU, or 75% of the business in businesses in the EU use cloud uh, computing, big data, or AI in their businesses. Um, and very importantly, it also includes uh, um, um, better um, uh, public services, digital public digital services uh, provided by governments in the EU, where the target is that everyone in 2030 in the EU has access to electronic ID, electronic health records, and online public services. Um, and this is a, it's a very po um, popular topic in Germany because we always say that digitalization is not going so well uh, in Germany. And I think it's really good that the EU as a whole sets these very ambitious targets for member states to then uh, implement the necessary measures to basically get the EU ready to be a, a sovereign actor in, in a world that's increasingly digital. Mm -hmm.